Hey everybody, today I'm talking about Accounting Plus. As part of a new series that I'm doing on my channel where I spend an hour in game recording and then review the game based on that. So for some games that I'm new to, this will obviously be a brand new experience and I'll be able to give uh, a first hour kind of rating on it. However, today we are doing Accounting Plus. I've had Accounting Plus since it came out on the PSVR. Um, so this game I have played for a couple of times. Um, but I went for it and uh, today I'm going to review the game. So first we're going to jump into the gameplay section. <coughs> now, don't get me wrong, this game is fantastic to play. With so much in it, but you then complete the game and you realise you've only spent 40 minutes playing the game. I spent 20 minutes playing the only challenging part and the only reason it's challenging is because of how long the dialogue takes and you're on a time limit and all that lot you have to spend about three or four times trying it before you actually get it easy really uh, so yeah that's pretty much why I spent 20 minutes doing it at the end that's nearly half the time that I spent playing the game um, so as far as gameplay goes I'd probably rate it 5 out of 10 uh, it's fairly low because it's a story game with not a lot of story in it like it's an ex it's more of an experience game. I'm going to be talking more about that, but uh, most of the time it's just people shouting loudly over each other, which causes more like confusion than it probably should do. Um, don't get me wrong; it's a fun game to have, but when it's just things shouting over each other all the time, it gets a bit annoying. When that is the whole game. Uh, the game was released back in 2018, and it was a pretty good game for. That year, or it was released on Steam in 2018, should I say? Pretty, I can't remember if it was actually released in 2018. I think it is actually released in 2018. Uh, yeah, it's a great game though. I just wish it had more depth and was a little bit longer. Uh, a few personal things uh, that I didn't like about the game um, is the fact that there is only one way of locomotion, and that's through teleport. There's no free locomotion, which is a bit annoying. So I really I. I don't like teleporting, it really like breaks immersion for me. I love the whole free movement, walking around and all that lot. Uh, also being able to turn smoothly would be great as well. Uh, this has no turning in the game whatsoever, so you have to physically turn your body around. Uh, don't get me wrong, this is not that much of an issue, but it is a massive issue at the same time. Because uh, I'm in a fairly long room, but quite like uh, short. It's a long room, but it's kind of thin, thin like sides to it. So when I have, and they can never pick exactly where the front of the room is. So sometimes I'm facing my TV, my microphone, my bed, the wall in the corner, you know, just because that's where they've decided to put the front of this particular uh, level. And it's just an issue that I have. If I had more space, it'd be way different uh, on the PS. VR, I couldn't even complete it because of this exact thing that I'm talking about now. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's uh, my opinion on the gameplay. Moving on to sound and music. Now, a game built by the same guys that made the Stanley Parable, and then them cooperating with the Rick and Morty team on sound, makes it a really, really good blend. Because it starts off with sounds that like interact in a certain way, like... For example, in the courtroom scene, you hit a, um, a briefcase with a little public defender in it, and it opens up and there's a little ring to tell you that you have done this. There's also like little tunes to say you've done, uh, like when you pull the core out of the um, tree guy world, or tree world, when you pull that core out, uh, it makes uh, like tune noise to say you've deactivated it. Uh, so yeah, I said all those little like rings and stuff like that, they all blend the game really together. Uh, they're louder than the voices, which is kind of a bit weird because the voices are just shouting continuously. Uh, all the lines are fantastic, but they do repeat after about 30 to 40 seconds of listening to them, most of them. So they get a bit boring after a while. They, I said you can't, you couldn't long this game out even if you tried to most of it because eventually the characters just start repeating themselves. So if you're after to like wait the characters out, I think I did it in a live stream 
one time actually. Oh, this is getting outside the hour, obviously, but you know, I did a live stream where I went into the gap, the parking garage area, and I waited there to see what the police say because uh, because the police behind you actually talk, and they have quite a bit of dialogue, but they don't do anything throughout that whole talking bit. They don't come, they don't show up. I wanted to see the police would show up, and they just don't. It's really annoying, but oh well. It doesn't. It makes. They give you a really false sense of that you're going to be. You're you're hu being hurried through the game, because they haven't got anything to actually force you to hurry for it. So they just try and use the music and all that lot. And to be honest, it works pretty well most of the time, unless you're purposely going out your way to stop it. So for that, I give the game. Um, I also I give the game about eight out of ten for how well it blends the music, the songs. And all that lot, one minute you've got um, oh, certain noises for certain stuff opening and stuff like that. Next you've got a rap about demons um, that changes depending on what you're holding at the time. Etc, etc. So 8 out of 10 I feel like is a pretty good place to put it for the sound. I said it's just a little over the top for the voices and all that lot for me. but And because of how short they are, etc, etc. So yeah, it'd be, I said this game just misses uh, the mark just because of how short the game is uh, so overall I give this game a solid 6 out of 10 uh, the Crows 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 team worked really, have uh, done a really good job on this game to be fair uh, it comes together really well and it feels like it just feels like there just could be way more game there um, but this is also one of the reasons why I got myself into VR this, this game was one of the first games I got on the PSVR and it really opened my eyes to what VR could be. I had loads of fun with it the first time I played through it. Um, yet again, I but I took my headset off after an hour and realised that I don't. Well, not even an hour. I think I spent about half an hour on it because I just played through it how I would normally. I kind of spat. Um, oh, waited it out a little bit more in this in my playthrough. Um, but the problem was is the constraints of the PSVR. Only being able to face one way was obviously a problem, um, and also the just in general uh, me not having a lot of room in my play area uh, was also an issue. But that's like I said a personal issue. It's kind of a puzzle game, but it's more of just an experience. And to be honest, it's not that great in my opinion from that standpoint of either of those two. It doesn't do. It tries to do two things and it doesn't do either of them that well because it's trying to be the other one at the same time. It's a great game, I do love the game, I recommend the game, but to be honest I can't really say is it worth the money? Uh, I'd say you'd have to buy it on sale to be honest if I was going to recommend the game. Buy it on sale because, uh, well, it's just it's a good game but it's not great. Anyway, yeah, so uh, if you like these uh, reviews that I'm doing, uh, I'm going to be posting probably one a week of VR games that I have uh, until I run out of VR games, and once I've run out of VR games, I'll probably panic, because that means I've stopped buying stuff, which means that there must be something wrong with me. So anyway, I will catch you next week then. Bye-bye!